Okay, let's go step by step. How does muscle tissue transform energy? What it refers to is we have, um, so it's chemical energy of ATP transformed into the mechanical energy of movement. This is it. That's all I did. Main functions of the muscle. Obviously, movement of all sorts, including, you know, movement of food and, you know, liquids in the body. Then um, protection, right? Um, abdominal muscles, generation of heat. That's another really critical part. Um, what else? Yeah, that's probably going to be it. Movement, yeah. Yep. Three unique features of muscle tissue. So it's excitable, right? It's contractile. And it's elastic or stretchable. Some of these features are not unique to the muscle per se, but combination of all three is specifically, you know, muscle tissue thing. Skeletal, cardiac, and smooth muscle. So what you need to know. So skeletal, voluntary, cardiac, involuntary, smooth, involuntary, right? Striations. These two are striated. Branching. Only cardiac is branched. So fastest contraction is in the skeletal, then you have cardiac, then you have smooth. And regarding stimuli for contraction, what is the only stimulus for the contraction of skeletal muscle? Nervous. Smooth cardiac. Nervous hormones, chemical, mechanical. Yes, very good. Clear? Moving on. Um, how many arteries usually deliver blood to a given muscle? One. Veins, one or several. Motor unit. Please clearly understand what is the motor unit. You have one, what? Neuron that innervates. Usually more than one. I, I don't know about any motor units that would have one muscle fiber. So it's usually more than one muscle fiber. Um, what's the difference between direct and indirect attachment? What's the indirect attachment? What a muscle is attached by? The tendons. Remember, tendons are the ligaments. Ligaments do not connect muscles to anything. Okay. Um, anatomical structures that comprise the muscles. We can do sort of a flow chart. So what's the outermost layer of the muscle? Connective tissue. Epimysium. Then you have pretty much like a muscle, right? And then you have what? You make it a little thinner. Then you have perimysium. Then you have what? Fascicle. Then you have what? Endomysium. Then you have muscle fiber. Then you have myofibrils, which consist of sarcomeres, and sarcomeres consist of the filaments. Does that make sense? You have to structure it right there in your mind. Are we good? Moving on. We kind of, you know, muscle fiber. Same as the muscle cell. Sarcolemma. Remember, sarcolemma is the membrane, right? 
it's not the same as the endomysium. How many nuclei in the muscle fiber? Many, right? And it is not branched. What is the sarcoplasm? It's the cytoplasm, right? Sarcoplasmic reticulum. Endoplasmic reticulum. Smooth or rough? Smooth. Because smooth endoplasmic reticulum is responsible for calcium storage. Yeah, main function, calcium storage. Myoglobin in its function, oxygen storage. Glycosomes, well, obviously, glucose storage. Myofibrils, we discussed that those rod-like elements, right? Contractile elements inside of the muscle. How they shed rod shaped of, what are they made of? Made of sarcomeres. Sarcomere, okay? Um, just to remind you. So this is myosin, this is actin, right? This is elastin, elastic, titan, titan, sorry, elastic fibers consist of titan. Um, that's actin, that's myosin. So how do we call this portion where they overlap? A band. How do we call this portion? I-band where they do not overlap. This structure is at the end. The bound sarcomere are Z-discs in the center, M-line, and this area is H-zone. Um, so thick, thin, elastic filaments. Myosin, octen, Titan. Bounds of the sarcomere Z discs, what's in the middle M line, difference. Understand where the overlap happens and where it doesn't. So if I ask you why I band is like light or what are why are there striations? You can tell me, you know, because at A band there's an overlap, it's darker. Overlap between myosin and and actin, thick and thin filaments. Um, why is H zone lighter than A band? Because in H zone you again have no overlap. Can you see that? Good. Myosin molecule. All you need to understand about myosin: two tails, four heads, right? So heavy chain, light chain heads are the parts of the light chain. What are the functions that tails and heads have? Tails, what do they form? Yes, the two tails and four heads. Um, tails form the body of the filament and the heads, what are they function? There are two functions. So actin binding and what else do they have? ATPAs. Um, so we answered this question already. So cross bridges are formed by the heads, right? And the body of the filament is formed by the tail. Structure of the thin filament. Remember bead, like little beads that come together. So you have globular actin and globular actin forms the, the filament actin, F actin. Individual actin subunits in the chain G actin. What's the function of tropomyosin? Yes, it, it prevents, it blocks binding sites on actin so that myosin heads cannot interact with it. What's the function of troponin? Calcium binding, right? and shifting tropomyosin away from the binding sites.
terminal cister cisterns or terminal cisternate, <coughs> where are they? They are parts of what? They are parts of sarcoplasmic reticulum, remember, and they're located near the Z discs of the sarcomeres. The function, they interact with T tubules, releasing calcium. T tubules are the extensions of what? Sarcolemma and T tubule with two terminal cisterns, they form terminal triad. How are the elements of the terminal triad connected? Remember by receptors. I'm not going to ask which receptors those are. Okay. What is the importance of this connection? What does it allow to happen? It's pretty much like one question. When action potential reaches to tubules, what happens to the calcium from goes into the cell from where? Sarcoplasmic reticulum. Remember, sarcoplasmic reticulum, part of it, terminal cistern, is next to T tubule. And there is action potential in the tubule. It sends the signal to the terminal cistern to release calcium into the cytoplasm, sarcoplasm. So. Okay. Now, what happens to the sarcomere during contraction? Length of the sarcomere, does it change? Yes, it does. How? It shortens. Z-discs become... Closer, A band, does it change? A band, does it become shorter? No, I band, it does become shorter. H zone disappears. What about M line? That's a simple question. Of course, it stays the same. It doesn't go anywhere. It's a line. It's put in, right in the center. Okay? Does that make sense? Why does it all happen? What do filaments do? What's, what do we call the model? What is the name of the model? Sliding filaments. We'll get to the cross bridges. Excitation, contraction, coupling. What does that mean? What does excitation, contraction, coupling mean? What has to happen first? Excitation, right? Cell has to change its membrane potential and that will lead to contraction only in this order. Contraction cannot happen without excitation. And excitation, if it happens, if action potential is generated, it will inevitably lead to the contraction of skeletal muscle. We talk about, of course, you know, normal situation. So what happens at the neuromuscular junction? You know, there are a lot of questions here, but what should come to neuromuscular junction for contraction? Action potential, and it has to generate action potential on the muscle cell, right? Which iron plays critical role in the contraction. 
Contraction, not excitation, contraction. Calcium. Neuromuscular junction. What do you have to understand? It's neuron plus muscle cell. Synaptic cleft is the space between them. Okay? Axonal terminal. Okay, what happens at the axon? When action potential arrives, what gets open? Huh? Calcium channels. So calcium flows into the neuron, okay? Because the constant. Why? Why does it flow into the neuron? Because concentration of calcium outside is higher, okay? This ionic flow will lead to release of acetylcholine. A neurotransmitter goes into the synaptic cleft. And neurotransmitter in the synaptic cleft binds to the receptors, which are essentially sodium, potassium channels. And when it binds, it opens these channels. How do we call such channels that chemical can open? Ligand gated, very good. Ligand gated channels. So what happens to so we got ligand gated? What happens to these transmembrane proteins? They open. How does the change ionic flow across the sarcolemma? Sodium in potassium out, but there is more. Sodium in, then potassium out. So how does it change the membrane potential on the sarcolemma? Depolarization. Okay, so which ions are responsible? Sodium. Which ion actually leads to the depolarization? Sodium, goddamn sodium. What do we call this potential? And plate potential. And what happens to the neurotransmitter after the excitation? Hmm? It gets it gets broken down, usually but not usually by enzymatic degradation. Okay. What happens if end plate potential reaches the threshold? What is formed then? Threshold action potential. So which ion channels are responsible for the spread of action potential across sarcolemma? Full name. Four words. Voltage gated sodium channels. Does that make sense? How are they gated? How does the muscle cell membrane potential changes when this channel is open? More positive, which means becomes the membrane becomes depolarized. Okay. Now what ion is responsible for repolarization? Hmm? Voltage gated potassium channels. Very good. Going to use VG for voltage gated. So depolarization, repolarization curve. Depolarization, right? D. Polarization, repolarization. Which ions are responsible? Depolarization. Sodium in. Repolarization. Potassium out. Okay. What restores the concentration of ions across the muscle membrane? Sodium, potassium, 
pump. What is latent period during the whole excitation contraction coupling? What happens during latent period? What's going on during that period? Which processes? What did we start with? More detailed. What did we start with? This whole process, description of this whole process. What did we start with? Action potential. That's our time zero. So action potential arrives at the neuromuscular junction, right? Does it take time to, for calcium to flow in, into the neuron? Does it take time? A little bit of time. Does it take time for ACH to get released? Does it take time for, to form end plate potential? Does it take time for action potential to spread through sarcolemma? This is a latent period. Does that make sense? There is no contraction. Things are going on. Do I make sense? Things are still going on on the sarcolemma, but there is no contraction. Okay? So everything that happens, uh, so everything that happens once the action potential reach, <coughs> reaches it, then, like, then they're contracting. That's the latent period. Be between the action potential reaches the neuromuscular junction to contraction. That's latent period. Muscle doesn't contract. Things are going, but muscle doesn't contract. It's like a fuse burning on the grenade, you know, before it explodes. You know, you, it's still, that's going to happen, just not right now. When action potential reaches T tubules, what happens? Which ion gets released? Calcium, right? Okay, so signal reaches terminal cisternae through the system of two receptors, you know, and calcium is getting released into where? From sarcoplasmic reticulum. Where? Good. So, what calcium binds in a myofibril? Troponin. What does troponin do? Nope. Troponin. What does it do? Shifts tropomyosin. Yes. What What is the general role for tropomyosin? Blocks act in myosin interaction, right? Now, when it changes its conformation, what is formed? Yeah, well, binding sign, sites on actin. Now, it's really important that you imagine this. Tropomyosin is bound to actin. So when it shifts, it's the binding sites on actin that get open. Does that make sense? And then myosin can bind to actin. Does that make sense? Which part of myosin binds to actin? Head. So that forms... Oh, that's a typo. Sorry. That slash is a typo. So during cross bridge cycle, this is easier to show, but well, or I will spell it out. So first, when ATP is bound to myosin head, what happens to ATP? Breaks down. How does it change the conformation of the hand? It cocks it back. 
gives it energy, right? So now it's energetically charged. Why is ATP necessary for this process? Because it bears energy. What happens when coked myosin hand binds to actin and releases ADP and phosphate? It slides the actin filament, I'm sorry, it slides the actin filaments towards which part of the sarcomere? The M line, the H zone, hmm? yes, it slides towards the M line, bringing Z discs closer together. Okay? Remember, for that. For that cocking process, for that, sorry, pooling process, ATP and phosphate have to be released. Now, in order to detach the head from, of myosin, from actin, what do you need to, what does the head need to bind? ATP. So, the mechanism for rigor mortis is what? Say again? don't detach. So Jessica just said there's no ATP produced anymore. Does that make sense? But calcium is there. So calcium initiates contraction, but there is nothing, no ATP, to detach the hands from the actin. So they stay in the contracted state, okay, and the person becomes solid, like in, in tetanus, okay? Why does it go away eventually? Cross bridges are broken down by like proteases, okay? So generally, like in one statement, what's the what are the effects of hypocalcemia versus hypercalcemia on the muscle? Hypocalcemia makes muscles more excitable, hypercalcemia less excitable. You don't need to know the mechanism. We clear? Very simple. Okay, let's just talk about the isotonic contraction, isometric contraction. Isotonic length changes. If muscle shortens, the contraction is concentric. If it lengthens, it's eccentric. Gener during isometric, sorry, isotonic contraction, muscle tension in relation to load. Muscle tension is greater. Only greater muscle tension can enable isotonic contraction. Okay? In isometric contraction, does muscle change its length? It doesn't. What about the ratio between the load and the muscle tension? Tension or force developed by muscle is less than the load. Does that make sense? Did we cover everything here? Yeah, filaments. When do they slide, when do they not? During which type of contraction do they slide or do they not? Isotonic, they slide. Isometric, they don't. During isometric contraction, does cross bridge cycle form? Is it formed? Look, I'm pulling up that table. I produce a hell of a force. So it's pretty much like... like I don't know how to imagine that there's there's a rope coming out of here. So this is the disc. Okay? The rope that comes out is actin filament. And I pull on it. And the Z disc doesn't move because the load is much higher than the tension. Those bridges are formed. They try to pull but just can't because of the the, the force ratio. Does that make sense? The contraction is still going, ATP is being uh, hydrolyzed, calcium is released, everything's fine, just there's no movement. Okay? Motor unit, again, one neuron, several fibers. Okay? 
not nerve, not branch, neuron. Are we clear? When motor unit contracts, does the entire muscle contract or just a small tiny patch? The entire muscle contracts, even if weak. What is muscle twitch? Single action potential act on the motor unit, single motor unit. Three phases. Latent period. What happens during it? Action potential travels, coupling, yes. Action potential travels through the sarcolemma. Calcium is released from sarcoplasmic reticulum, right? There's no contraction yet. During contraction, calcium What happens during contraction with calcium? What does it bind to? In, come on, in a fiber, in a, in a sarcomere, what does it bind to? Calcium. Which protein? Troponin. It binds to the troponin, right? Contraction is going on, blah, blah, blah. What, hap what happens during relaxation to say to the calcium? They get back in the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Do they fl do they diffuse or are they pumped? They pumped. Think about this. If one thing diffuses one way, usually to bring it back, you need to pump it. Like the the bike tire. You can open the the nipple. And the air will just go away. But if you want to get it back, you need to pump. Does that make sense? So, calcium is pumped back. Now, quickly, quick review because it will be helpful. Action potential propagation itself, does it require ATP? No, it doesn't. Because it's so voltage-gated sodium channels. Restoration of... Iron concentrations across the membrane, does it require ATP? Yes, it does. Because to restore the concentrations, you need a pump. Calcium going into the sarcoplasm, does it require ATP? Going into the sarcoplasm, no. It diffuses out of the reticulum. Pumping it back to the reticulum, Yes, it does. Does that make sense? So pretty much the contraction portion requires ATP only at the myosin hands. Do you understand what I just said? Do you understand what I just said? I'm going to repeat it again. Contraction portion requires ATP at the heads to cock them back. The relaxation portion requires a lot of ATP, correct? Do all the muscles have the same twitch profile? No. What defines the twitch profile? Yeah, muscle function. Whether they're quick muscles, slow muscles. Temporal summation of the muscle twitch. When twitch, remember? Um, okay, that's horrible wording, but anyway. Temporal summation of the muscle twitch. When twitches start to happen more and more frequently, right? Now, when this temporal summation occur, which period shortens? The relaxation period. When there's relaxation between twitches, how do we call this muscle contraction? Unfused tetanus. Tetanus, the word tetanus, it is not a disease. Tetanus simply refers to contraction. Now, when there's no relaxation between the twitches, it is fused tetanus. What's recruitment? With the increased stimulus, what increases? 
you start you start with one unit then two three blah 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 eventually you're gonna rec so when the stimulus increases the more units get recruited right is the recruitment limited yes by what how many motor units do you have that's it okay why is it important to gradually increase the number of units recruited why don't we just recruit all of them just for kicks exactly because if I need to lift this cup I don't need the same number of motor units as I need to I don't know lift my backpack okay which is much heavier does that make sense which units are recruited first so we go small medium large we clear we good why small first we don't know we just don't know like maybe this cup is filled with gold I wish then my regular effort wouldn't be enough does that make sense that's I love this this moment when you know when you used to lift heavy boxes and you put all the same effort to all the boxes and then you accidentally grab an empty one and it pretty much flies up because you didn't realize um, okay that's like very basic the bigger the fiber the higher the force okay so what happens to what happens when muscle fiber becomes bigger it has more huh myofibrils very good what's more common hypertrophy or hyperplasia hypertrophy now please if I ask you about which muscle normally proliferates normally divides normally smooth normally smooth muscle divides cells of the smooth muscle normally divide it's absolutely it's not a disease can so cells of the skeletal muscle fibers can they split yes they can is that normal no it is not it's like extreme effort extreme force does that make sense so if you get a question saying normally don't overthink cardiac muscles normally do not divide otherwise we would never have a problem with myocardial infarction skeletal muscles normally do not divide otherwise we wouldn't have a problem with sarcopenia so hypertrophy is more common hypertrophy is bigger size hyperplasia more cells extremely why extremely stretched to extremely shortened muscles poorly contract what's wrong with them the overlap of myosin and actin filaments is far from perfect it's not ideal does that make sense so you don't have to memorize 80 to 120 percent but you have to remember there's fairly narrow range in which muscle will develop the mass maximum force load how does it change the speed and duration of contraction contraction is going to be so lower load makes the contraction faster and it lasts for a longer time does that make sense okay what is ATP used for during muscle contraction boring details please what is it used for I understand it's energy what do you need energy for so first of all myosin heads yes what about action restoration of the ionic balance across the sarcolemma 
sure, yeah, you need four pump for sodium potassium pump. What about pumping calcium back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum? Sure thing, right? So those are main, and I'm not even talking about um, making acetylcholine inside of the neuron. It's about neuron. It's not about the, the muscle cell. Do, do we make sense? Okay, here. We good? Moving on. So, three major metabolic pathways. I list them for you. Come on. Substrate level phosphorylation or the direct phosphorylation. Creatine phosphate plus ADP gives you ATP and creatine. Which is... So, what's, what are the features of that pathway? Extremely fast. No oxygen. Extremely inefficient, pretty much, right? And also, it produces a lot of creatine, which you have to pee out, really. It's a lot, huge. If you take supplements like creatine, if you take a lot, it's a huge load on your kidneys because they need to flush it out. Otherwise, well, in AP2, when we'll get to the renal, we'll talk about it. Fast, low efficiency, no oxygen. Moving on. Every year I'm tempted to ask about like 11 steps of glycolysis, but I don't do that. What is the molecule that's necessary for the fermentation? Glucose. What's the product of the fermentation pathway? The final, final, final. Lactic acid. Does it have high efficiency? Not lactic acid, but fermentation. Is that highly efficient? Higher than direct, but still not really. You have two ATPs per molecule of glucose, which sucks. Does it require oxygen? When is this path pathway mostly used? During what type of effort, I mean? Short-term explosive effort, okay, high effort, heavy exercise. What makes muscles anaerobic? Squeezing the blood vessels during contraction. It, it applies to all the muscles, well, to cardiac muscle as well. Every time your heart contracts, the cardiac muscle becomes anaerobic. It's fascinating. Aerobic respiration. What are three major steps? First step, shared with fermentation. Say the name. Glycolysis of glucose, glycolysis. Second step. Hans Adolf cycle. Cycle people. Which cycle? Krebs cycle. And the third step is electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation. Right? Three steps. High efficiency? Yes. Does it require oxygen? Yes. When is this uh, when is this pathway mostly used? low intensity aerobic exercise okay what are the final chemical products of aerobic respiration co2 and water speaking of which what do you do with co2 you exhale it which molecules can be used as the sources of chemical energy in this process Glucose, lipids, or even proteins. Which makes it actually very funny. Because it, it, it's... It, we'll talk about the review if you want to mention. Remind me to talk about the weight loss. Which pathway is mostly used for low effort, prolonged exercise? Aerobic. Respiration. Short duration. Fermentation and direct... Uh, phosphorylation. 
Do muscles use all processes? I should say all, not both. Okay? All processes or switch completely to just one. They use all, always. But it's tipped towards aerobic or anaerobic depending on the type of exercise. Does that make sense? Now, I want you to focus on two types, slow oxidative versus fast glycolytic. We'll mention fast oxidative, but these two I want you to focus the most, okay? So, slow oxidative. Let's just list the features, okay? Slow oxidative. Speed, rate of movement. Oh, well, wait, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. We have a table, the entire table. Okay, which type of metabolism each muscle uses? Slow oxidative use. Now what? What type of metabolism? Aerobic. You can say respiration. Humans are incapable of anaerobic res so respiration. Can fibers in each motor unit belong to different muscle types? No. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? It's like mixing soccer players and rugby players to play basketball. Okay? They will suck. All at different level, but they will. What is the advantage of having different types of fibers in a single muscle? It's more about... So fatigue resistance is more about... Um, Activating just few motor units, but having different types of fibers. Think about this. Um, if you would have all the same types of the muscle fibers in one muscle, you would be more like an alligator. You would be absolutely incapable of one of the types of effort. Okay? You would be able to run, I don't know, like 50 miles, but when it comes to carrying, I don't know, a, a, a bag of groceries, you would be inept. Does that make sense? Or vice versa. Okay, um, speed of contraction. Slow. Fast. Of course they fast. Fast. Primary pathway for ATP synthesis. I'm going to write respiration. Fast glycolytic. Fast glycolytic of fermentation. Fast oxidative. That's going to be both. Respiration the most. Myoglobin amount. Fast glycolytic, not fast oxidative, glycolytic. Two major types. Slow oxidative work when? Forget about the third column for a second. Do you see? You mixed it up in your mind. Well, I don't want you to mindlessly copy the table from the lecture. I want you to think, okay? So, fast glycolytic. The amount of myoglobin. Do you understand why? Why? They don't need oxygen, so they don't need myoglobin. In fast oxidative is high, right? Glycogen amount, is that clear? Glycogen amount is slow oxidative. Fast glycolytic, fast oxidative, yeah, yeah, we'll do this, okay? Recruitment order, slow oxidative, fast glycolytic, third, fast oxidative. Rate of fatigue, huh? So, we're going to put third. Fast glycolytic. First and fast oxidative. Two. Color. Red. 
white, pink. <laughs> Diameter of fibers. Small, Small. large, large. yeah, kind of in the middle. Do you understand why slow oxidative is small? They do not produce an effort, huge effort. I mean, huge effort. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, fast glycolytic, you need them large to lift a whole bunch of weight. Number of mitochondria in slow oxidative? A lot. Fast glycolytic, few. Fast oxidative, medium. Medium or many. Number of capillaries? Plenty. Few. In between. Type of activity? Marathon. Deadlift. Walking. Does that make sense? For muscle fatigue, major mechanisms that are responsible for the fatigue are ionic imbalance. Which ions are included? Sodium, potassium, calcium, right? Inorganic phosphate accumulation. I separate it from ionic imbalances because phosphate has very profound effects. It is extremely important. And ADP accumulation. Lactic acid. Sorry, I mixed it up. It goes here. Okay. Lactic acid doesn't cause the fatigue. It, it is temporarily associated. So that's the answer here. It's temporarily associated. Does that make sense? You understand what it means? What happens to lactic acid in the body after the exercise? What are the organs that break it down? MC Hammer. Liver, heart, two major organs that break down lactic acid. Post-exercise oxygen consumption. What you need to know is when muscles relax after the exercise, what do they need to restore? Oxygen to in myoglobin. What else? Huh? Glycogen and glycogen synthesis requires ATP, number two. What else? Look right here. It's the first line here. If it's in balance, then... So we need to balance science, which requires pumping. Okay, again, energy. Does that make sense? So we need ATP for a whole lot of things. For um, glycogen storage, uh, for... Um, I, pumps and stuff like that for ATP per se we need to make new ATP and all of it requires oxygen in respiration does that make sense this is where post exercise oxygen consumption come 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 from restoration of muscle chemistry I was overheating oh come on maybe we just skip it yeah, overheating is sweating and, you know, uh, dilation of the blood vessels, blah, blah, blah. How muscles participate in the body temperature regulation. They shiver, yeah, produce warmth. Okay, let's move on. What happens to the muscle after endurance training? Number of capillaries increases. Mitochondria, myoglobin. Should go up. Yeah. Uh, gross muscle properties, strength, you have to be aware, moderately increases, 
and I will explain in a second. Endurance. Very much. Fatigue resistance. Very much. Can one type of muscle fibers be converted to another? Yes, to the limited extent. So if I will start serious weight training, my running endurance will suffer and vice versa because of the change. Now, with strength, I want to highlight. When we say strength of the muscle, what do we refer to? Realistically speaking, what provide if muscle is weak? Okay, sorry, okay, let's start off. Let's start off. Strong muscle. Okay, what does that mean? First, you can do what? A lot of lifting. If you are a runner, can you lift? A lot. You can't. However, your muscles have another component of strength. I wouldn't call it maybe strength, but mechanical resilience or tensile resilience. What gives muscle tensile resilience? Pretty much resistance to injuries. What type of tissue? Connective tissue. When you train, the amount of connective tissue increases. Does that make sense? Which prevents injuries? Which type of exercise will increase the amount of connective tissue more? Endurance or strength? Strength. This is why if you say, you know, if you're doing track and field or you're doing cross country, lifting is, is for cross country as well, it's an endurance exercise, but the lifting is important to a moderate level to, in many instances, increase the mechanical strength of tendons that stabilize your joints. Does that make sense? You don't have to lift 400 pounds in the squat because you won't be able to run then. But there is a certain level of exercise okay resistance training muscle size increases number of filaments increases mitochondria moderately increases glycogen storage very much amount of connective tissue very much uh, strength goes up a lot endurance Not really. I mean, a little bit. Fatigue resistance? A little bit. Not, not a lot. It's more about strength. Does that make sense? Overload principle. Hey, you need to put more effort every time you exercise. Can constant training lead to muscle injury? Yes, of course. There were cases in kids who overtrained. In children, there were cases of rhabdomyolysis. To give you an idea, what is that? Is that when cells in the muscle, they break down, like your muscle fibers break down. It's horrible. Um, should exercise program contain only the desired type of exercise? Should different activities be combined? Different activities, you know, it's pretty obvious. How do skeletal muscles end up multinucleated? They fuse together. Which type of muscles can actively divide? Smooth. I use acronym SMC, Smooth Muscle Cells. It's very common acronym. And for some reason, it is not applied to skeletal. It's S if you see SMC, it's Smooth Muscle Cells. Physiological importance of division. You can grow new blood vessels. Uterus can increase in size during puberty and so on and so forth. What happens to cardiomyocytes after the myocardial infarction? What do they do? What do cardiomyocytes do? No, they die. When there's myocardial infarction, it means that there's no blood flow to a certain region of the heart. Cardiomyocytes die. What replaces them? Connective tissue. So, does the heart work better or worse? Worse, because it's not contractile tissue. 
When is the peak of neuromuscular coordination development? During adolescence. Muscle tone. Muscles always contract. Importance of it, um, it keeps them in shape and it also allows muscles to start the contraction not from the zero but from certain get-go. What happens to the muscle if it loses innervation? It degrades, right? Can this process be reversed? No. Remember, when muscle degrades, what substitutes the muscle? Connective tissue. So that is why. What is sarcopenia? Normal, age-related loss of muscle mass. I shouldn't say reverse here. Can it be prevented? Yes, by what? Resistance training. We good? We clear? It's like 401k or social security. Okay? At some point, you're going to retire. And your income, your salary disappears. If you put enough money on your retirement account, you will still get some money. So pretty much if you put a lot of muscles and you keep training them, let me put it this way. If you're 55 or 60 and you not shooting yourself with hormones and stuff, just, you know, living active life and lifting, you're not going to lose muscles as fast. You're going to lose them, but not as fast. Do that make sense? Now, if you want, like, there are some really freaky old guys that like old. They seek like they have all those bumps in their hands. Male and female muscle tissue has more. Who has more? Males. What about the relative strength? Same. What causes muscular dystrophy? I specifically mean Duchenne's muscle, muscular dystrophy. What happens to the dystrophin molecule? Dystrophin degrades. It's dysfunctional, right? There is no connection between the sarcolemma and muscle fibers. Uh, and, sorry, and myofibrils. Okay? So there is an inflammation. Muscle fibers become fragile. They become damaged, they become inflamed, inflammation leads to repair, repair results in accumulation of connective tissue, which results in the muscle weakness all over the body, life expectancy in late 20s, early 30s, pattern of inheritance, sex-linked recessive, which means women are carriers, men getting sick. Can the disease be cured? No. Treat it, yes, with anti-inflammatories and there is now a drug that they run through clinical trials as far as I know. Single unit smooth muscles. Where can you find them? Walls of hollow organs. Multi-unit smooth muscles. Think about this. Intestine. Is it finely operated organ. It is not. The contraction is not very precise, you know, it's large patches and stuff like that. Do I make sense? Ciliary muscles, iris, erector pili, are they finely operated organs? Yes. There's very small movement. They're pretty much weak, right? But they, very, they produce very fine movements. So uh, multi-unit smooth muscles, that's going to be iris, ciliary muscle, or ciliary body, or rectal pili. Single unit smooth muscles, how they can be arranged? Circular, longitudinal. There's a bleak in the stomach, but that's 
What is the importance of such two-layer arrangement? What it can produce? Peri peristaltic movement. Does that make sense? Like shortening and huh? pushing, yeah, peristalsis. Have you ever seen the peristaltic pump? You have one at home. When you squeeze the toothpaste, you do peristalsis. That's peristalsis. Does that make sense? Shape of the smooth muscle cell. Spindle, ZF striations. No sarcomeres, no how many nuclei, one, myofibrils, no, myofilaments, yes, sarcoplasmic reticulum, ah, just a tad, where does calcium come from? Huh? Extracellular fluid, sorry, I didn't notice that, whatever. I think it'd be good. So, um, extracellular fluid, right? A little bit from sarcoplasmic reticulum, but extracellular, flu extra cellular fluid is really important. Okay. What type of innervation do smooth muscles have? Autonomic. That's all you need to know. Autonomic. Right? Do they form neuromuscular junctions? They don't. What structure innervates smooth muscles? The varicosity or diffuse junction. What type of neuron? Well, you answer it. It's autonomic neuron. Do they have troponin? No. Tropomyosin? No. How are filaments arranged? They spiral, which means muscle contracts as a corkscrew. Okay. Actin filaments, what are they attached to? Dense bodies, which are the substitutes or anal analogs of what in skeletal muscle? Z disc. Very good. What is functional sensation? That is facilitated by gap junctions. So smooth muscles, do they have functional sensation? Do smooth muscles have gap junctions? Come on, 50-50. I think there's a category in jeopardy, 50-50. Do muscles have smooth muscles. Think about what they do. Think about how they contract. Think about how smooth muscles, many cells in the smooth muscle of, say, intestine, do they contract all at the same time? Certain fragment of intestine. Millions of smooth muscle cells. Do they contract all at the same time? Am I taking any points so I will start for silence? Do they? Wait, 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 wait. That's that's the part of intestine, okay? I'm showing you the contraction. Do the cells contract at the same time? Yes. How? Do they have like billions of neurons running to them? Why do they contract all at the same time? Huh? Gap junction. So does smooth muscle have a gap junction? Yes, they do have gap junctions. Cardiac muscle, does it have gap junctions? This is your heart, the two ventricles of the heart. This is what happens when your heart beats. That's systole. So they do, right? Skeletal muscle. So cardiac muscle has gap junctions. Smooth muscle has gap junctions. What about skeletal? Whatever you say, you will have to explain it. Don't hesitate to say, but th I will ask you to explain why. No, no. why? They Excellent. They don't all move at the same time. Do you understand? Imagine this. I want to lift my phone 
I send the signal to one um, neuron, okay, and all muscles, like all of all cells in my biceps just start contracting. This is what's going to happen, right? I, I won't be able to normally operate, okay, so they don't. Pacemaker cells, what are they? Cells that can excite by themselves, and they send action potentials down the road, okay? Pretty much they set a certain rhythm. What kind of stimulation may initiate smooth muscle contraction? Again, nervous, hormonal, chemical, mechanical. Each molecule on the surface of smooth muscle, blah, smooth muscles, like Donald Trump. Which molecule on the surface of smooth muscle cell is necessary for activation? If it's the surface of the cell. No. If it's a chemical, what chemical, the chemical, does it have to interact with something on the cell surface? Receptor. If you see cell surface and molecule, it's going to be receptor. Which ion plays the key role in the smooth muscle cell contraction? Calcium. Where does this ion come from? Extracellular fluid and sarcoplasmic reticulum. What does it bind to? First, colmodulin. So what happens to colmodulin after calcium binding? It forms triple C, you know, calcium colmodulin complex. Colmodulin gets activated. What does it do? What does it activate? Colmodulin. When colmodulin is activated, it also activates something else. Myosin light chain kinase. What does it do to myosin light chain? How? Is phosphorylates it, it adds phosphate residue to the myosin light chain. So myosin light chain can do what? Form the cross bridge with actin and start the contraction. Does that make sense? When smooth muscle cell contraction stops, what happens to the calcium concentration? It decreases. When it decreases, what happens to calcium colmodulin complex? It is not formed. What happens to myosin light chain kinase? It is not activated. But what is activated then? Myosin light chain. Phosphatase, which what does it do to the phosphorylated light chains of myosin? Dephosphorylates it, so it removes the phosphate residue. Okay, how does it affect cross bridges? There are no more cross bridges, so what happens to the smooth muscle? It relaxes. Very good. What's the latch mechanism? Smooth muscle stays contracted for an extended period of time, okay? Importance when, say, you have slow contraction in the intestine, it may stay contracted for extended period of time without using ATP. What is the most likely mechanism of the slow contraction? Helen Murphy, latch bridge model. Here's the thing. When... Myosin head gets dephosphorylated. Technically, myosin and actin have to disassemble the cross bridge. Does that make sense? That disassembly comes very, very, very slow. Okay, it's a kinetic process, it's a kinetic control. Calcium concentration in sarcoplasmic reticulum is restored. Slowly. 
So calcium stays in the sarcoplasm for a longer period of time, okay? Myosin filaments stay attached to actin for a long period of time. Colmodulin dissociates with calcium slowly. Those are all slow processes. Stress relaxation response. Now, a uh, few things, not actually a few things, just one thing. When we talk about stress relaxation response, the main thing I want you to understand is that in stress relaxation response, the idea is that muscle is being stretched. And when it is stretched, it relaxes. More stretch and it relaxes again. Okay? So with each stretch comes new relaxation, and that new relaxation decreases the pressure inside of that whole organ. There is a stretch of your intestine, stretch of your stomach. It doesn't immediately, because think about this. If you would eat the food, the pressure would increase up to a certain point, and the food will be pushed either into the intestine or out into the esophagus. It doesn't happen. Because muscles, smooth muscles of the stomach, they relax as they're being stretched. And it also allows them to contract since they are relaxed. Right? And the ratio in which smooth muscle can contract is much wider. That range is wider compared to skeletal muscle. You can stretch skeletal muscle to two sizes, normal sizes, and it will still be able to contract. Does that make sense? Can smooth muscle cells divide? Yes, they can. When is it good? When? Huh? Repair, yes. When we grow new blood vessels, you know, growth of whole organs. When is it bad? Stenosis of blood vessels, atherosclerosis. Okay, when there is an inflammation, okay, smooth muscle cells divide as the result of inflammation. The muscular wall of the blood vessel become thicker, and that obstructs the flow. So that's atherosclerosis. And I think it's a final well, couple of things, yeah. So unitary single unit smooth muscle, we talked about it. It's a sheets of pretty much smooth muscle cells, all acting as functional syncytium. They found in the hollow organs. Um, functional features, they all contract together. Okay? They don't have individual cellular innervation respond very effectively to either nervous stimulation or hormonal or chemical, doesn't really matter. Multi-unit smooth muscle, we talked about that. Smaller, right? More finely controlled movements, erector pili, ciliary body, iris. Functional features, cells less connected by gap junctions, they often have individual innervations, okay? Are we good? Okay? We good?